Hey everybody, welcome back to the Otherworld Hospital in Silent Hill 3. I'm still Negra. And, well, I think the game is just getting to me a bit too much, so first I will find out the elevator does not work, and then I will show off something that most people probably don't know about, and that is... Whoa. Yeah, the, uh, the ladder we took up here is actually no longer there, and I'm trying really hard to make Heather fall. Yeah, there are some unique death animations uh, throughout the game. I actually wanted, I forgot to show off, but if you get killed by a nurse, a rather odd and disfigured looking doctor will actually drag you away, or if you, uh, as you just saw, you can fall to your death, and I think his name is Vatalia, or Vidalia, something. He's an onion. He will laugh at you while you plummet to your death. But enough of that, I think we should actually uh, maybe start talking about the inability to find any doors with this particular wall texture going on. Because there is a very important door we need to find before we can, can or before we should continue out of this hallway, not before we can. We can, we can exit this hallway whenever we want. And next to these handgun bullets, it uh, it appears like someone needs a hand, right? Right? Uh, never mind. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and leave this room behind. There's uh, there's nothing much else in here. But that actually wasn't the room we were looking for. The one we're looking for is going to be on the left-hand side of the hallway. I actually think this very nice, creepy wall texture is actually causing a, a tiny bit of slowdown, but that's okay. And we will actually need to be keeping track of this particular room in the future. Perhaps we will need this gentleman's assistance, or we'll just need the noticeable bucket of blood on the floor. I'm not actually going to be able to take the entire bucket with us, so we're going to have to find some other container for that. But I guess I should talk about a little bit of the aesthetic for Heather's Otherworld Brookhaven Hospital because it is fairly different from what James had run into. It's a lot more fiery and bloody, and that might actually have to do with Alyssa's experiences, well, Alyssa's experiences with hospitals. Oh. Yeah, it's now time to deal with an upgraded version of the Slurper. And I will tell you right now, I will not be doing very well at combat in this particular uh, episode. Thankfully, dealing with Slurpers is... Well, thankfully they still don't do that much damage. Yeah, they hit me like five or six times and it did piss off. And don't ask why it struck me to use the mall for a little bit, but I figured we hadn't seen... what the hell? What the hell is this black stuff?
Yeah, I should probably leave. Oh. Alright, I can't leave. And this is getting kind of disgusting. This is getting bad. I really want to get out of here. Ooh. Yeah, that is a death trap. If you don't manage to get out of that room before everything turns black, Heather will just die. And that uh, that's kind of an in it's kind of indicative of something that's going to be coming up way way later on in the game. Yeah, my uh, my juking skills aren't really up to snuff in this area, but I mean, there's really little you can do with three slurpers in a very, very small hallway. But thankfully the elevators are still working. Let's go ahead and see what we have. Well, looks like we actually have some additional basement floors, but before we check those out, I'm just going to go in order. Check out the second floor. Rather impressy, impressive gas effect going on here, but... Seems to be obstructing... What the hell is going on in there? Yeah, the Vidalia fellow seems to have a rather... Uh, well, let's say lack of appreci appreciation for the nurses. And we can see him quite on, often torturing them. Oh, but the locker's ringing. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear. Oh, I forgot your name. Who are you? Oh, okay, thanks. Happy birthday, dear, who are you? Happy birthday to you. Happy 31st birthday! Is this Leonard? That's the murderer's name, not my name. I'm not your beloved Stanley either. He's underground now. His new name is Number Seven. <laughs> but don't worry about that now. It's time to celebrate your birthday. You've got me mistaken for someone else. Today's not my... I'm not mistaken. Today is your 24th birthday. And I have a present for you. Which do you prefer? To give pain or to receive it? You can have the one you hate the most. <laughs> Happy birthday to you! 
But you're wrong. It's not my birthday. And no, we will never find out when Heather's birthday actually is, but the rather creepy gentleman on the phone there, who may or may not have been Stanley Coleman, he mentioned some rather interesting ages of, what was it, uh, 31 and 24? And coincidentally, Heather herself is 17. Those are all seven years apart. But also those ages are the ages of other kind of prominent Silent Hill characters. Can you guess which ones? You got a health drink and a plastic bag. That plastic bag will actually be perfect for carrying around some blood and... Um... All right. Yeah, this particular gentleman is actually not Vidalia. He's, uh, he's just kind of a guy locked up in a locker. And we'll never see him again. It's just a creepy set piece. Let's see if I can wield this mall correctly, finally. Nope. Alright, I, I swear a third time is the charm. Jesus. What the hell hit me? Ah, his friend decided to come join in the fr the fracas. Alright, I'm taking a bit too much damage here, so let's go back to the Old Faithful and heal up just a little bit. Now, before we venture down to the first floor, I think since we have all these... Well, actually... I guess I will go get the blood first in my little plastic baggie. Now obviously you don't have to go get the blood immediately, but, you know, it's on our way to being out of our way. And we shove a very poorly secured bag of human blood into our pocket. But yeah, since we have all these basement floors to check out, let's go ahead and start at the lowest basement floor and see what's waiting for us. Why, it's what appears to be a crematorium. I guess slash morgue. And as we can see, there are certain bodies that are actually present, and they have numbers on the sides of the gurneys. And that's actually going to be what we're going to open up this uh, crematorium oven. Sure, let's go with that. But we got a few Roman numerals and a few Greeks burning alive on what appears to be some kind of fresco. But all we need to do is, well, basically match up the position of the Roman numerals and the position of the numbers, and 
just put the numbers onto this padlock here, or this combination lock, I should say. It's not a padlock. Let's just put them in the correct order. And there you go. The hard mode puzzle, or hard version of this puzzle, involves like a 12 stanza poem and knowing about birds, and it's, oh, it's a headache. But for our troubles, we get a key. And thankfully, no creepy remains. And if you want to check out the key, it doesn't really hold much information as to where we'll be using it, but so far we haven't actually run into any locked doors, so there's that. And we were told that 7 was actually Stanley Coleman, so... What the hell is that? Is that you, Stanley? Ah, never mind. So let's see what the other basement floors hold for us. Nothing. Alright. So on to the first floor. By process of elimination. And thankfully, we're actually safe on this side of the chain link fence. The enemy, the nurse, is actually on the other side. But we do get another diary. This one is actually not Stanley Coleman's diary, but it's someone else's. I, I'm going to go ahead and ruin it. It's not really that much of a spoiler. This is Leonard's. Just kind of exposing his weird sense of justice and having to fight for God's rights to party, I guess. But Heather does bring up a very interesting question. How do you determine that you, Leonard, are one of the necessary people? percent of the doors are locked, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't investigate. Perhaps one of these doors will hold something good for us, or a continuation of the hospital. Sadly, it seems that the reception area is pretty barren in the other world hospital, so that room was indeed a waste of all time. But there is one more open room on this area, and it actually has something nice for us. Not just the save, but another ambulance. That actually brings us up to about four, which is really... Really not that much, but considering that they are full heals, they are very, very handy. But we just get a little bit more information about a particular member, or a uh, patient at the hospital in room 312. Apparently has some very strong religious beliefs and is prone to violent actions. Apparently, though, he's in room 312, but if we remember from, well, the normal world version, those were labeled with letters and two-digit numbers. So, where on earth would room 312 be?
there you go, that's my one successful kill pretty much this entire video. I, I do apologize for failing at combat just for this video. There's a lot going on in this hallway. Oh, great. Yes, a revolver nurse and four slurpers. I... Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, when I said the game decides to get a little bit harder, it uh, definitely does get a little bit harder. Thank god the katana is such a great weapon. But, what do we get in here? Well, we actually get a very nice reward. This is another one of those rooms where... Uh, yeah, this is, this is another one of those rooms that, depending on what kind of items you currently have, it will basically give you the opposite of what you currently have an excess of. So, if we had an excess of healing items, but a very limited supply of bullets, it would give us bullets, and vice versa. And though I wasn't able to look at it on the outside of the door, was actually well, a message that said, Happy Birthday. So I guess maybe the ghost of Stanley wasn't so bad after all. But just taking a quick look at our map here, we don't really have very many other places to go. This hallway is pretty much the only place we haven't explored yet, and... Well, needless to say, the door we want is the last one on the left. Yeah, I kind of need a hurry. That hallway is definitely not something to be trifled with. But we get another save symbol. And what appears to be well, a ritualistic sacrifice room. And Lost Memories was actually the name of, I think it was the making of DVD for Silent Hill 3. And I'm wanting to say it was the name of one of the books you end up finding for the resurrection ending in Silent Hill 2. But you can pause this if you want to. It's basically just outlining the fact that ritual sacrifice in the most cults and religions has kind of died out because... You can't keep killing people, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's the only thing we really need to garner from the book is the fact that blood sacrifices were common, and, well, nearby there's actually a an altar of sorts to, I guess, make a blood sacrifice too. And hopefully, if you are playing this yourself, you made sure to grab that blood back on the third floor because, well, you saw that hallway, and if you didn't clear that hallway out, you're going to have to make your way back through it. But, thankfully, we made sure before we came down here to pick up that bag of blood. So, I guess we're just going to go ahead and use it. And sa make a sacrifice to this poorly drawn, upside-down cat picture.
end by making a sacrifice to whatever heathen god we just made a sacrifice to. It opens up a rather large hole in the floor, which leaves us with no other way to go but down. ridiculous dream is over. Well, I guess it's time to dispose of her. The salvation of all mankind. Ha! Why must we reward even the unbelievers? What are you talking about? About our plans, of course. It's true that God is merciful. But first, one must be chosen. We, who hearken to the voice of God, will be given the keys to paradise. Don't you think so, Peter? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and think whatever you want. What do you mean by that? I mean that I don't think the way you guys do. I don't want any part of that kind of paradise. You're an unbeliever. You deceived me. I didn't deceive you. We were both just wrong about each other. I thought you were a normal person. So you tried to trick me so you can run off with my seal, eh? Heretic! You plan to destroy God! I told you I wasn't trying to trick anyone. What is this seal thing anyway? Don't play innocent. You can't fool me anymore. The seal is mine! I was appointed by God to be its guardian! The only thing you'll get from me is a gruesome death. Wicked Ice Burn. So, say hello to. Well, was it the third boss? Yeah, I think. This is, well, Leonard. Leonard Wolf. Claudia's father and protector of the seal, and. I guess, uh. His domain is piss water. Yeah, Leonard is actually one of the few monsters that actually. Re still has some sentience and ability to talk. He and about, uh, I think, three or four other monsters on all of Silent Hill. And he is actually pathetically easy. But I haven't really shown off the submachine gun at all, so let's go ahead and show that off just a little bit. Well, first off, I'm gonna take off the silencer, because I don't know why that popped on. But yeah, like I mentioned before, the submachine gun fires very rapidly, does reasonably good amount of damage. You just do not get very many clips of it in the game, so you gotta be a little bit careful. And you may be wondering what, uh, what amazing attacks that Leonard has. Well, he swims under the water and he will slash at you. That's pretty much it. No projectiles, no teleportation, no 
weird illusionary powers. He's just kind of big and, well, kind of fast underwater. That's pretty much it. And we're already out of submachine gun clips, so shotgun it is. I really cannot uh, recommend fighting Leonard with a melee weapon. It will not go well. He pretty much has a much longer reach than Heather does, and, well, for the most part, you're not really going to be able to hit him underwater with melee. So, hopefully you made sure to hold on to a, as many shotgun shells as you want, or as you can, because fighting this guy with a handgun is, well, it's even less exciting than this. But yeah, you may be wondering if maybe you can have him run into the grinding gears at the far end, and no, they will not hurt him, but they will hurt you, so make sure not to run into those. Leonard's not here anymore. I guess I should head back to the motel now. I hope Douglas is okay. Huh? What's this? Why, that is actually the seal that Leonard was protecting in his piss-water domain. But after that horribly lengthy battle, I think it's time to head back to the motel. And I guess we got something of revenge for Claudia killing our dad. I, I, I guess that makes everything better. But thankfully, the hotel or the uh, the hospital is now completely devoid of any enemies, so it makes getting out fairly simple. Why did you send her to my father? Was that wrong? It's your fault that he. Oh, but surely it's a good thing. It means he was one of God's beloved, no? Those who mock God will never receive salvation. You'll go to hell, Vincent. You'll never feel the joy of God's everlasting paradise. And you think God is going to save you? Ha! Huh. What do you know anyway? I know about the pleasures of this world. And I want to find my happiness while I'm still here. You hated your father, didn't you? I saw the way he hit you, and kicked you, and made you cry. The memory of his cruelty is forever burned into my mind. Yes, yes, and that's why we need God. What you call faith is nothing more than a child crying out for love. That's why you're all alone. understand. 
None of you do. Ah, and who doesn't love community theater? But let's go ahead and jump back to our motel room since nothing happens on the way there. Where's Douglas? He went out. But he left a message for you. Was there someone else here just now? No, no, just me. Don't you want to know what the message is? Yeah, what did he say? The church is on the other side of the lake. Church? I wonder what he meant by that. You don't understand? That's where Claudia is. Across the lake. On the north side. If you're going, you better go through the amusement park. It's probably the only way in now. Go northwest on Nathan Avenue. It's a bit far, but closer than heaven. Is that it for the message? Uh-huh. Thanks. Douglas really said that? What's wrong? You don't trust me? So it looks like next time we're going to be heading to the Lakeside Amusement Park because a creepy guy told us to. See you next time.